Hey guys, um, so I wanted to make a video uh, just brainstorming a little bit on um, this whole thing in, in evolutionary theory where uh, we had this idea that competition um, was the spurring force behind um, evolution. You know, like when, when you think of the competition of different species, you think, oh, they're right, right, you know. Um, who is the most fit to survive in the environment survives. Um, and that's the general mentality we've all had. That's how it developed. And now, if I get, if I understand, if I'm assessing this correctly, um, there's this new theory saying, oh, uh, I don't know so much about the competition part. I think the cooperation part between different species, um, and within species, uh, perhaps is more of a driving force than we thought in the first place. This whole uh, notion of fighting and competition is actually partial and secondary to the true um, ability of nature to cooperate and coordinate with, its, with itself, with all of life and the environment as a whole. Uh, and that's what we have to look at. So, um, well, I, I tend to actually agree with the second premise because uh, just, just the, the growing data, how you know we're, we're, we're working with each other and all these symbiotic relationships and evolution, um, there, it's just, there's, there seems to be a very, very um, rapidly growing pile of data saying we need to look at evolution differently. Um, so I don't, I wouldn't consider myself a neo-Darwinist in, in, in the least, and I think uh, if anybody really wanted to, and if they were aware of these things, because neo-Darwinism is sort of, you know, it's the staple, it's the staple understanding of what, you know, the evolution of species is. So, I think if if anybody really wanted to, they could kind of create a nice, balanced um, argument for a completely different kind of mechanism in evolution, um, besides competition. Uh, and and you could probably make a rational case for it. Um, it's just that you know the, this whole creationist debate, intelligent design debate. Uh, it's it's strengthening a theory that's in the midst of transformation. Um, I mean, it's anchoring a theory that's trying to that's dealing with its own problems, neo Darwinism, and and there's all this new evidence saying evolution is not exactly what we thought of. Um, thought it was there's so many more mechanisms and other factors we never took into account and um, if you look at Evo Devo which is uh, evolutionary development uh, for instance just this one example the phylogenetic tree of life um, extreme diversity in, in it and there's so many different types of life but uh, what's it called uh, our, our, our genetic differences are minor so they're not sure how less genetic differences can actually generate more um, uh, phone phonetic phenotype phenotype differences so exterior differences all these different varieties of life yet um, the DNA is actually not so different from each other so they don't know how exactly um, how this works and also they're saying DNA can activate and deactivate in an organism's lifetime well, this is actually, um, this, this, this uh, adds more to the picture because now we have uh, organisms that could adapt in a single lifetime instead of um, random mutation. It's more of perhaps there is some kind of mechanism in the DNA itself that actually is more reactive rather than passive. Um, so we have all those things. Um, and secondary, uh, secondly, I was thinking this whole idea of uh, an organism needs to compete for fit, fitness in its environment. Um, I'm wondering if this stems from, um, well, if you're familiar with the philosopher Alan Watts, he has this, uh, this little skit he does uh, saying, you know, um, in the West, we, we have a tendency to feel separated from nature and thus, uh, nature becomes very hostile to us. Um, and here's just a little quick brainstorm. But if we have this hostile attitude towards nature, right? 
if we feel alienated from nature, if we feel detached and separated and fragmented, uh, because our, our particular cultural worldview is very fragmented, um, then when we go into nature, you don't think we'll be carrying those, you know, if, if, when we go into studying nature, you don't think we'll be carrying some of these biases with us. Um, so when I thought, you know, when Darwin was coming up with uh, the, his, his theory of evolution, um, and, and how, how it was received by the culture, uh, it was very much received as um, in this kind of hostile attitude that, um, yes, we evolved from these lower forms of life, and that was, you know, groundbreaking, but the interpretation of that evolution was uh, life is hostile and, and the fittest survive, and they had a more brutal, kind of blunt way of putting it. Now we think of fitness as just a simple fitness to uh, its environment. It doesn't mean super strength, it just means um, adaptability. So, and we, and we thought this was through competition. Um, so now we're beginning to, to con reconsider this whole alienated, hostile, competitive segment trying to survive. I mean, think about this. We are little, uh, we have this impression that we're just individual segments and fragments fighting each other to survive. And then we see life and we think, well, hey, they're doing it too. Uh, but maybe this is some kind of cultural confirmation bias, if you know what I mean. We have this whole attitude towards the universe, and then we look at nature, and it confirms it. Um, but the only reason why I'm saying this could be the case is because now we're developing the theoretical frameworks that are not based on this kind of hostile, competitive environment um, that's secondary to the cooperative, symbiotic environment that life seems to be having. Um, and then there are also theories like um, Lovelock you know, and, and Gaia theory and how the Earth as a whole is acting like an organism rather than um, segments and fragments just naturally adapting uh, endlessly without any kind of coherency. Instead, there's it seems like life is moving towards uh, symbiosis, wholeness, um, interdependence. I mean, these, you could say interdependence is secondary, but... It almost functions like um, like an organism in and of itself, and I think this is very fascinating, and it's a phenomenon that uh, neo-Darwinism is not equipped to adequately um, understand, and that's, anyway, my opinion on this. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you, your thoughts are on uh, the cultural origins of neo-Darwinism and how perhaps uh, Western... Uh, Western culture has a little bit of a confirmation bias going on, a little bit of a, a bias towards interpreting its environment. So, thanks for listening.